Bum, 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 Dun 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 Hello, my friends. It's so wonderful to see you. Good morning from sunny and windy Western Australia, says Tara. Wonderful to see you, Bob uh, Dunbar from Kentucky. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's so good to see you all. Hello, my friends. My name is Joette Calabrese, and I'm here every Monday night at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. And we do one thing and one thing only, and that is we go over and learn, and I teach you what I know about homeopathy. Hello from Singapore, says Yana. <laughs> Wonderful to see you all. Tyler, Texas, my friends from my Mighties and Facebook and rumble and youtube x etc hello my friends please as you go through tonight do me a favor like share comment subscribe to my youtube channel it makes certain that homeopathy gets out there to as many people as possible because the more people who are using this the easier it becomes for you to procure the medicines to get help from others and for you to help others Hello, Cindy from Iowa. <laughs> Hello from Utah. Holy cow from Utah. Greetings from Arkansas. It's wonderful to see you all. Hello, Nina from Maine. Greg. Hello, Bob. Hello, everyone. It's so great to see you. Hitting higher notes these days. <laughs> Leanne. Hi. Great to see you. Wonderful to see all my friends, my those people who are with me every week. You guys are with me every week. for This has been years. It's years, and it's very supportive of me. You know, there was someone said to me the other day, thank you for getting all this information out to us. And I say, you know, I have to tell you, no, 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 we're okay. Uh, I have to tell you, there was a time when no one was listening. <laughs> Not online. It was long before then. There was a time I would talk about this subject, and no one really gave it a care. Uh, they didn't know that there was such a thing as homeopathy. They didn't know that homeopathy has been stifled in North America, especially, but that throughout India and Europe and South America and Central America, homeopathy has been alive and well for two centuries. Yes, my friends. It's been here in the United States where it was very big in this country, in case you don't know that. We had about 99, 100 homeopathic hospitals up until the late 1940s. Um, I was actually born in a hospital that was um, a few years earlier, had been called, had been named Buffalo Homeopathic Hospital, and then they renamed it Millard Fillmore Hospital by the time I was born. So that I was born in 52, and that was about 1948 that that name changed. Um, indeed, I tried to buy the big brass, was it brass? Was it, I think it was brass, sign, huge, gorgeous sign that I had seen in the building in Millard Former Hospital in Buffalo, New York, um, that said Buffalo Homeopathic Hospital. They had a display of it at one time. And when the hospital, uh, and when the whole building closed down, they actually tore it down and put in condos. <laughs> um... I tried to buy that that uh, big metal um, sign that was was that that hung beautifully over the front door of Buffalo Homeopathic Hospital, and it wasn't the only one, my friends. Buffalo's not that big of a city, but we had three homeopathic hospitals. New York, I think, had six. Big cities had many. Smaller cities had at least one. Yes, these were homeopathic medical doctors who had gone to medical school and homeopathy school, and the nurses had to, and this is what they did. They treated 
with homeopathy. If surgery was required, they sent them elsewhere. They sent them to a hospital or a practice where surgery was, was uh, practiced. And that's the way it remained in many countries throughout the world except the U.S. And so it's really a market square, isn't it? And in the market square, uh, the big, uh, big pharma won out. But my friends, I think we're at a crossroads. That's my feeling. I think it's going to get harder for a while, and then I think we're at a crossroads. And I've said this before. Um... I've been studying and using homeopathy. Well, I've been studying and using natural methods for about 41 years. Nutrition, you know, botanicals, um, changing my diet, um, eschewing chemicals, shampoo, um, deodorant, all of those things. I eschewed those years ago. Cleaning fluids. No, no, I keep it very simple. Um, so I took that on about 41 years ago. And then I started studying homeopathy about 36 years ago and went into practice about 28 years ago. I think I've got that about right. I always think of it in terms of the ages of my children. And so at that time, um, I was very interested. I studied with a group. We had about five of us, then maybe there were seven, then it went back down to five. And we met every Thursday night for four years, and we studied homeopathy. We helped each other. And so what came of that was gateway to homeopathy. That's what I encourage folks. If you're not in a study group, I urge you to go to Joette's Learning Center and go there um, and look at gateway to homeopathy. Now, I have to tell you, we have it in Espanol now. and We'll be doing much more in Espanol. I'm quite excited about it. We'll be doing the Materia Medica in Espanol and the, and the protocol courses and much more. Um, I think I, I'm very excited about this prospect. We can never move fast enough. Um, but I think that after having been in this arena for this many years, I, um, what's going to happen the clash between pharmaceutical industry and government and overreach and the people's desire to own their own medicines, the people's desire to be able to choose for themselves what they put in their bodies and their children's bodies. People who are desire to know how to do this is growing so, so exponentially that there's going to come there's, there's going to be a big conflict. And I wouldn't miss this for the world. <laughs> so hello from Missouri. Good evening from Yorktown, Virginia. Thank you for the hearts. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Hello from Missouri. Wonderful to see you all. So tonight, we're going to talk about something that I've talked about many times. But it is so poignant. This subject, anxiety is so big in our society. It's what drove people to make poor decisions in 2020 and 21, wouldn't you say? It's anxiety. It's not being able to, not knowing a homeopathic medicine to take, but also not trusting what you know. And so if you don't know, then of course you shouldn't trust. <laughs> we don't speculate here, my friends. We need to look at the real we need to have our information at our fingertips. We need to own our homeopathic medicines because they're not on every corner as they are in other parts of the world. I was just in France. I was just in Italy. It's everywhere. It's ubiquitous. South America, Central America, it's everywhere. India, every corner, there's a homeopathic pharmacy. Every corner, there's a homeopathic doctor. And so, because we don't have that in North America, the U.S. and Canada, and some other countries, Australia, New Zealand, they also don't have it, then you need to stack up. You need to know what medicines to own. And that's what I talk about. And so each time I teach you a medicine, I want you to write it down on your list and order it. Make sure you have it on hand. Very important. And you not only need to own the medicine in the potencies that I teach you, but you need to own the knowledge. 
because when the peanut butter hits the fan, my friends, you need to know how to do it. And if you don't, then it's even in the vending machine, says, um, says uh, uh, that must be Lisa. <laughs> yeah, it's everywhere. It's ubiquitous. Everyone uses homeopathy in those countries that I've mentioned. Here, most people don't have an idea what it means. They think it means holistic. And we are here as the representatives of, a, of God's medicine, homeopathy, to teach others. Now, let me also say, I'm going to back up a mi- for a minute. I'm going to say if someone doesn't want to learn, that move on. There are many who do. And if you happen to be in my academy or you've taken any of my protocol courses, you know how many people are starting to knock down your door to get to you. The world is suffering. There's a lot of illness. And so we need more of us. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to talk about the anxiety that comes with not knowing and how anxiety is relieved by knowing what to do. Okay, anxiety. This is a generation, uh, this young generation I have read recently has more anxiety than previous generations. Um, Is it because they've been more medicated? Is it because the food they're eating is not real enough? Is it uh, because they're too often in front of a screen and they're not outside? They didn't grow up outside. They grew up in front of computers. Could it be any of those? Could it be electromagnetic fields? Could so many potentials, but it matters not, does it? Does it matter that the reason for the anxiety is because of the food that they've eaten or the injections that they've gotten or the drugs that have been so recklessly administered to our children? Is it the microwaves? Is it the magnetic? What? Is it the politics in the world today? It doesn't matter so much. What really matters is how is it presenting? So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. A, anxiety. And so we've got three medicines that begin with the letter A that give us our first jump into this world of how to treat anxiety. The first one is, I know you know, many of you know this, is Aconitum napalis sometimes known as aconite for short. I keep aconitum napels, not every day, not all the time, but generally speaking, I keep that in my purse because it happens to be one of the main medicines for when there's an accident. A, accident, and the anxiety that ensues from that. So aconitum is for panic attacks especially, or it can be ever since the person has had, had an experience that shook them on a very deep level. Now, they may not recognize it. And I don't know how important it is that you even dig that far. What's most important is that they have panic. And it is, let me get back to my, I'm going to show you my Materia Medica. If you don't have it, you might be interested in it. You go to joettecalabrese.com. A materia medica, it's a very simple one. It's intended to be used for people just to have a quick reference. So aconitum, um, it is uh, one of our best medicines. Oop, wrong place, let me get to aconitum. I'm gonna read directly from my materia medica. Aconitum, it can happen all of a sudden, you're in an automobile accident, maybe not even that much injured, but the panic, the anxiety, the angst that follows it, person is shaking that can be an excellent time to depend on aconitum it can have a fear of death their heart is tense or there's a sensation we don't even have to have an an exact explanation of what's going on in the heart there is something going on in the heart and they have this fear that they're going to die that they may die today that they're going to die soon i am so sick it feels like i'll die That is aconitum, my friends. Fear of death and almost a prediction. Not a true prediction, but they're sort of predicting. They're saying, by the end of tonight, I may not be with all of you. This anxiety, this feeling I have in my heart or in my body, doesn't have to just be the heart, is so intense 
that I feel as though I will expire in a short in short order. It is one of the best medicines for anything to do with the heart, especially at the onset. It's not the only medicine. We have many cardiac remedies. It's useful for a fright from an injury, as I just said, the distress of surgery after surgery, or even fear before surgery. It's an ailment from bad news. You hear bad news and the person just can't break away from that sensation that it is a, uh, that there's there, serious danger is imminent. Danielle says, Aconite Nepalis has helped my loved one with panic attacks, stops it in two minutes every time. It works. And it when someone's in a panic, it works that fast, in a jiffy, that quickly, often. 200 potency is the potency. I use Aconite 200. Does it mean you can't use a 30? No, it doesn't mean that. 30 can work too. But I generally prefer it in a 200 potency. For congestive heart failure, it is one of the first medicines we start with, but then there are other medicines that we must follow through on. Just talk to a woman who was in a car accident with her dog, who was thrown around in the car and now petrified to be near the car or to get in the car. I thought aconite needed to be used at the time of the fearful event, aconite, but take, take it tonight. Will it work for a past issue? That's exactly what it works for. <laughs> yes. Someone was in an earthquake 35 years ago, and ever since that earthquake, they have these panic attacks. Got me off of meds for flying anxiety. You bet, Susan. Nice. Thank you for, for sharing. Yes, ever since that earthquake, ever since that difficult pregnancy, it's a great medicine for anxiety during pregnancy. Ooh, it's so lovely. One of my pregnancies, I had anxiety as I went into labor, there was no reason for me to have anxiety. I'd already had uh, a child, and, um, and it went swimmingly. I mean, it was long, but it was swimming, went swimmingly. And uh, this, uh, this particular second pregnancy, actually it was a third pregnancy, um, I had this anxiety out of the blue for no reason at all. Now, I did not recognize it in myself. And that's often what happens. That's why we want to be in study groups, so that we can help each other. Because sometimes we don't even know that something is anxiety. We just know something feels wrong. I just don't feel right. Life doesn't feel good. I just, something is wrong. And when someone, you talk to someone, then it becomes clearer than, that it is indeed anxiety. And so it's aconitum, 200. How often? Twice a day for a couple of days. Or in this person's case, she took it immediately. She gave it for a panic attack and it was over. Do we need to repeat it if the condition is resolved? No, we don't. These are not supplements. They're not vitamins. If I was on a desert island, says Robin, that is the one remedy I would, I would have. <laughs> you bet. It's a good one. Very, very important. So, aconitum is our first one. Our second medicine in the category of A's is arsenicum album. So I'm going to my Materia Medica and I'm going to read to you from there. Arsenicum album is also has tremendous anxiety and a lot of times there's gastrointestinal conditions that are related. The world is so anxious, says uh, Zelinda, and needs this to calm down, you bet. You know, instead of fluoride in the water, what do you think? <laughs> Someone puts this in the water. Aconite helped me heal from my trauma many years ago of a terrorist attack. It took two doses of Aconite 200, 200 and I felt fine. I love it. Thank you, Francia. Yes. I used Aconite 200 for my anxiety watching my hubby, hubby have a rod pulled out of his foot. You bet. Yes. These are the kinds of things that we can use this for. Now let's go to our Senecum album. Often there's a gastrointestinal issue. Sometimes somebody's adds, a, eaten some bad food, but it does, no matter. It doesn't have to be associated with bad food, but sometimes that's where it shows up. 
the person has gone to a restaurant, they've eaten bad food, and now they have uh, nausea, maybe some vomiting, or they feel very uncomfortable, and it is concomitant with anxiety. Mm, beautiful. That's a really good time to use it. We can use our Seneca album for when someone doesn't sleep. They're having difficulty sleeping because they have anxiety. They have a fear of being alone. A fear of being alone. They have fear of robbers. They have fear of bad guys. It can keep someone from being able to relax and be able to sleep. There's a sense of restlessness with our Seneca album. They may, if it gets bad enough, not always, but may get better enough that they pace or they walk from room to room straightening things and organizing things. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, in an effort to counteract, to antidote the, the, the restless anxiety that is befalling them. And they straighten this and clean that. And they often can be quite fastidious people. Now, all when I tell you this, it doesn't have to be, it's not this plus this plus this plus this characteristic plus that characteristic. There can be two or three of, the, of these characteristics and the rest are not even presenting in this person. So it's also, they often can be cold. Our people need our Seneca album. And again, I, they, can be, they can have itching, they can have allergic responses, that's another need for it. Tidiness. Restlessness that keeps the patient in constant motion, which may manifest in one body part, such as wiggly feet. And this restlessness will completely wear out the driven patient if the person is that restless, if it goes to that, that level. I remember I needed our Seneca album very early on in my understanding of homeopathy, and I had a friend who insisted that I take it, and um, I was actually afraid to take the remedy. I knew so little about homeopathy that I knew that our Seneca and what it was made from, and it scared me with because I did not understand what these medicines are capable of. I did not understand that Arsenicum album 200C means that it is indeed arsenic, but it has been diluted 200 times to the 100th power. And so the very condition that would be caused by being exposed to arsenic will be relieved by Arsenicum album 200C. It's so gorgeous. I finally did take the remedy and within, not unlike what, I can't remember who it was, um, who said, within minutes, minutes, I don't know, seven, I felt myself calm down. And I knew that that was going to be a good remedy for me. I did not take it over and over again. I took it only as it was needed. I only needed that one dose that day, that night. And so... Perhaps it came back a week later, a month later. The next day matters not, my friends. We meet the condition with the remedy. Don't make assumptions. Know that if it's needed, there that that is needed, we then treat that. We don't take it for long periods of time unless, I mean, certainly we can use homeopathic medicines for long periods of time. But what I'm teaching tonight are for is kind of more, kind of an acute representation of a chronic problem. And the way I see acute representation of a chronic problem is that the acute is like a bump on a log. There's this underlying anxiety or this underlying issue. And every once in a while, and whoa, it bubbles up and becomes more prominent. And when it does, it's a perfect opportunity to use this medicine, Arsenicum album. Yes, my stepmother won't take Arsenicum album, but happily takes every shot under the sun because homeopathy is dangerous. Ill-informed. Lack of understanding. So when, that's what, what has happened is the conventional way of thinking about medicine has many, 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 many hundreds of thousands, even billions of dollars behind it. So it's easy to convince people to use it. <laughs> ah, 
Yes, I used to sell television time. And when I finally left that, that paradigm, that, that job, that career, I found this, this um, uh, um, feels like something on my, my eye. Um, I, I found this bumper sticker that said, kill your television. And I put it on the back of my car. I learned too much about advertising. Okay. Yep. You bet. Homeopathy harnesses poisons. Thank you, Leanne. It gets those, uh, those substances that are on this earth that are so troublesome in their gross form and then dilutes it and dilutes it 200 times, for example, to the hundredth power and then harnesses the ability, re drops the, the toxicity down with each of those dilutions and then brings forth the curative aspect. All right. That was our Seneca album. Now let us go to um, Argentum Nitricum, another A. And I did this purposely. I wanted you to know anxiety, aconitum, arsenicum, and argentum nitricum. And argentum nitricum is especially useful for anxiety that presents um, in anticipation of something. So let me get that to get to my book here. My Materia Medica, Argentum. I didn't go in alphabetical order. No matter. Nervous tension, this remedy is indicated for symptoms including lack of coordination, loss of control, and lack of balance mentally and physically. Inflammations also, other kinds of our cartilage inflammations. Anxi anxiety about public meeting or family function that the person has to attend or just thinking about those kinds of things. It's a, a Argentum nitricum, I don't use it quite as frequently but it is an excellent medicine also if it's accompanied by diarrhea so our senecum album can have diarrhea and our gentum nitricum can have that fear of heights fear of tall buildings going you know being in a tall building and looking down or just being in a tall building they don't even have to look down just the thought of it my daughter has panic attacks with irritable bowel syndrome, I tell her, take arsenicum, says Angela. Works perfectly for anxiety for dental procedures. You bet. Dental procedures. It matters not the circumstance, my friends. These medicines will act. I have Parkinson's, says Liz, and do get anxiety. And um, you want to try to differentiate if you possibly can. And the best way to differentiate between these medicines, I'm only giving you three. There are many more remedies for anxiety. I'm giving you three of the fairly most top remedies is to crack open your Materia Medica. If you've got mine, then you use that. If you don't have mine, then you go online and you use the ones that are free. Boricke, B-O-E-R-I-C-K-E. Fatak, P-H-A-T-A-K. Those are the authors of these Materia Medicas that are available online for free. These are the old homeopathic masters. These are old, the old doctors. Let's see what else we've got here. Any other questions? When the person feels better from the medicine, <coughs> excuse me, then they stop. If they don't feel better after repeating it a few times, there's no change. Now what do we do? We look at what is presenting now. Is the person now getting thirsty and cold after taking aconitum? Is that presenting now a little differently and they were not improved by taking aconitum? Then what we're looking at, the possibility that this is going in, making it more clear to you so that you it's more obvious to you that it could be arsenicum because there's restlessness and cold and thirst. And by the way, the thirst, for people who need arsenicum album, they often do have thirst, but it's not a long, long drink. Instead, it's a drink for sips. A desire for sipping, not drinking long drinks. 
Ignatius says Jennifer, I have been using for anxiety and panic attacks. It's been amazing. Yes, Ignatia is another incredible medicine. And if I don't give you enough information here and you don't have a Materia Medica or you have not looked yet, go to my blog, Joette Calabrese, Anxiety. Always, I've almost always used the same potencies across the board, either a 200 or a 30. Either a 200 or a 30. Buy your medicines from a reputable homeopathic pharmacy, my friends. Okay, reputable. Boron, Boron, Washington, mm -hmm. OHM Pharma, Hahnemann Pharmacy, Helios Pharmacy in, New in England, Thompson's, they were actually a retailer in Toronto, not from someone's machine. Don't buy medicines that are from a machine. Think this way. There's this little seed that lands on the floor of the woods or the, the pasture. And it's the rain comes and the sun comes and it sprouts this beautiful little seed, grows into a little plant that's in the Alps. Let's say it's Arnica Montana. And it grows into this beautiful plant and the sun is beautiful and shining on it and the air is fresh and the soil is rich and naturally fertile. And it grows into the plant called Arnica Montana. And along comes the person who collects these plants the herbalist and they choose exactly the right time to pick that plant leaving enough plants around so that it's not diminished for the next person they know what time of the day what season at what stage the plant should be in in order to pick the plant for its most medicinal use and they collect it and they bring it back to a homeopathic pharmacy where it's tested to make certain that it is indeed arnica and that the conventional pharmacist who has also gone to homeopathic pharma pharmacy school makes the plant, the tincture, from the little seed that was grown in the Alps with the beautiful sunshine on it and the fertile soil, makes it into Arnica Montana, 6C, 12C, 30C, 200C, and then puts it in the perfect bottle that has been tested time and again to be free of contaminants in the most pristine setting where there are filters drawing out any possible contaminants. And so my friends, that is how homeopathic medicines are made. Or you can buy a machine and put, the, and put some dials on and dial it up and say, yeah, let's just use this medicine. Oh, let's just make this medicine out of some electronic method that no one truly understands. <laughs> for my family, for myself, for my clients, for my students, I want the best. I don't want an imitation. I want the best. And that's what I want for you too. Okay, my friends, wonderful to see you. Love you all. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next Monday. God bless you all. Good night. With our homeopathic protocols, you learn your remedies. My family needs a me, so I must know our remedies. How much to take, how often to treat, and when to stop. And when to repeat with our homeopathic protocols, you learn your remedies. Athusa, Nodari, it's elementary with arnica head, arsenica, feds, pajilia, slither, orms from wither, no more firm. My family, a needs of me, so I improve my memory. Not only the rems, but how often to treat, and when to stop, and when to repeat with your homeopathic protocols, and learn your remedies.
Bella so red in Arnica head, Drosera bark, Ignatia dark, Source of Bridget and Cuprum to Rigid, and Crude itches, Cali Capodicum, let it melt on your gum, Bovis to so Weed are some great ways to treat ya. La 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 la, homeopathic protocols, learn your remedies.